like most things in cancer research, we tend to do the things that seem obvious. So chemotherapy has been a tried and true way to care for people with lung cancer. Immunotherapy has found its way into lung cancer treatment as, a, as single agent therapies. And the next logical question is, well, what if you get both? And, and that really is the uh, genesis for, for how the studies were designed is, let's take the best chemotherapy that we use in lung cancer care and combine it with immunotherapy. Uh, at the, at the um, preclinical um, level in modeling, there, there, there could be good rationale for why chemotherapy and immunotherapy makes sense. Uh, if chemotherapy induces the expression of pd one if it releases antigen as tumors die, uh, that could enhance the T-cell response. Uh, so in theory, there, there's, you know, there, there's um, rationale for combining the agents. Um, some people wonder about the use of other things like steroids with chemotherapy. Would that blunt the effect of immunotherapy? Those are things we just don't have the answers to. But that's what we're, uh, you know, why these trials were designed was to take advantage of both effective therapies in lung cancer and give them together. Um, a lot of questions still, what should the right dose and schedule be? Should these be given in sequence? If you're going to use maintenance therapy, what is your maintenance therapy? Is it is it pemetrexid alone? Is it pemetrexid and immunotherapy? Is it both? You know, a lot of questions, but you have to start somewhere. And, and the pivotal trials are all fully enrolled, and we're just waiting on these results right now. Keynote 021 is a randomized phase two trial, so not giving us definitive data, and that's in contrast to the Keynote 024, which was pembrolizumab versus chemo. That was a randomized phase three, definitive practice changing. Keynote 021 was randomized phase two, so not necessarily practice changing yet. That was asking a different question. That was looking at combination chemotherapy with carboplatin pemetrexid plus or minus pembrolizumab. So it was looking at a three-drug regimen versus a two-drug regimen, which was the standard chemo. This study enrolled patients that had multiple different levels of pd one expression. So as opposed to the Keynote 24, which required a 50% expression, so the high expressors, this study was open to patients with low expression, less than 1%, or 1 to 49, or greater than 50%. And what the study showed was that in all of the subgroups, it seemed that the three-drug combination was better than just giving the chemotherapy alone. Better meaning response rates were higher. And if you looked at the combination of the chemo plus pembrolizumab and the patients with the high expression, greater than 50%, the response rate was like 80%, I mean, phenomenally high. But even in those that had very low expression, the response rates were quite high, uh, close to 50%. What was a little unusual, though, was that one of the middle groups, the 1 to 49, I think, was, was actually not as high. So it's a randomized phase two. We have to keep in mind that there are going to be some variations based on the small sample size. But the trend seemed to support that the three-drug regimen had a higher response rate than the two. The progression-free survival was also better with the three-drug regimen versus just the chemotherapy alone. However, the survival was not clearly better. It's, it's, maybe it's too small of a sample size. Maybe it hasn't been long enough. We don't know yet. But it's, it's a very intriguing and hypothesis-generating study, but one that I think we still need to look at further with randomized phase three data. Keynote 021G uh, was a, an important study that we heard about this past year. It's already been published uh, by Dr. Corey Langer and his colleagues. A very simple study. It was just taking patients with first uh, in the first line non-small cell setting, specifically non-squamous setting, and giving them the standard of care, which is carboplatin and pemetrexid, along with maintenance pemetrexid, or giving them that same uh, backbone of chemotherapy with immunotherapy. In this case, uh, pembrolizumab. Now, to get on this study, you didn't have to have a high expressing tumor, a so-called pd one positive tumor. PD-01 expression levels were collected and patients were, uh, enrollment was stratified or, or randomization was stratified by that expression. This trial, though, was designed simply to look at response rates. Could you improve the response rate with immunotherapy and chemotherapy compared with just uh, chemotherapy alone? We know from Dr. Langer's presentation and publication that indeed the response rate was improved, about a 55% uh, response rate. Uh, compared with 28% response rate with chemotherapy alone. Uh, a remarkable improvement in, in that response rate. Um, unfortunately, we're not seeing um, 
clear advantages in terms of survival with this regimen, and this trial was not designed to show survival advantages. It, it had about 120 patients total in the study, uh, but there are confirmatory phase three, phase, there's a phase three trial behind this that'll help us answer that question. An important study, showed it showed at least for now that chemotherapy and immunotherapy looks better um, in terms of response rate compared with chemotherapy alone. The Keynote 21 study was a very important randomized phase two study for the field of lung cancer because this was specifically looking at patients that did not necessarily have PDL1 immunohistochemistry expression. And so what it demonstrated in 120 patients, 60 roughly in each arm, was that patients who received the immunotherapy with platinum pemetrexid had a very good response rate. It was much higher. Um, than those who just received the platinum pemetrexid alone. And this was in patients who did not necessarily have high PDL1 expression. So this was the first study that actually demonstrated that adding an immunotherapy to frontline chemotherapy in a non-selected group of patients was potentially beneficial. There is a phase three randomized trial that is ongoing that will hopefully continue to show these results. But until that, phase three trial reads out, I think we should be cautious um, and hold off doing this in our patients until we know for certain that these results hold up. 